the angle of slope. So we've talked previously about gradient and how gradient is a way to describe the slope of a line and it describes how y changes as x increases by 1. Um, but obviously we could also describe the slope of a line by talking about the angle, you know, the angle of inclination of the line. Um, and so what we want to look at here is, well, how does this angle relate to the gradient? Because clearly they must be related. A particular gradient will make a particular angle with um, the x-axis. So we already know about gradient as being rise over run. So in this particular example here, we would be taking two points and calculating the rise and the run and using that to work out gradient. So... Now what I want to also think about in this triangle that I inevitably create when I look at the rise and the run or the change in y and the change in x, um, I've, I also know that this angle that the line makes with the positive x-axis down here, theta, well this is actually the same as this angle here and that's because this is a horizontal line and so therefore is parallel to the x-axis. And so these two angles that I've just marked as theta are corresponding angles. So thinking about this right-angled triangle, I've got a right-angled triangle here, an angle that I'm interested in working out, so I might use trigonometry. And if I were to use trigonometry, I would call this side here the opposite side, and I would call this side here the adjacent side. And so I can think about this same problem in two different ways. I know that the gradient is equal to rise over run. And I know that tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And in this particular diagram, opposite, and opposite over adjacent is the same as rise over run. And so therefore, tan of theta must be equal to the gradient. Now we need to be a little bit careful with how we interpret theta in terms of which angle theta is actually referring to. So we'll have a look at a couple of examples to see what's happening here. Um, but essentially we've got this relationship that tan of the angle is going to be related to the gradient of the line. So let's have a look at this example here. So find the size of the angle that the line y equals 2x minus 3 makes with the positive x-axis. Okay, so this equation is given in gradient intercept form, which means that this here, 2, is the gradient of this line. We could also calculate that given that we're given a diagram. So the gradient is equal to 2. Now I'm interested in finding the angle that this line makes with the positive x-axis. So we need to be clear about that. The positive x-axis is obviously where x um, becomes more positive, so off to the right. So we're looking at where the, the angle between the line and the x-axis as we head off in a right-hand direction. So we're talking about this angle in here, theta, so the acute angle. So that actually makes life easy for ourselves. So in this case, tan of that acute angle, theta, must be equal to the gradient, which is 2. And so to solve for theta, we're going to need to use inverse tan. So theta will be the inverse of tan, inverse tan of 2. And we'll just flick over to my calculator. And I'm using the TI Inspire CAS CX. So I want inverse tan of 2. Now I want to find this angle in degrees so given that I quite often work in radians we'll just check that we're in degrees so I'm going to hover over the battery here and indeed my angle mode is degrees so I'm all okay. If it was in radians it said rad there you would click here go to document settings and change the angle mode to degree. So we're in degrees so that's okay. So I want inverse tan of 2 so I'm going to press the trig button inverse tan of 2. Oops, close the bracket. Now obviously my CAS gives me exact values where it can, which is a hugely useful feature, but here that's not a useful answer for us. So I'm going to press control enter to get a decimal value. And our angle theta in this case is 63.43 degrees. So 
63.43 degrees, which is an acute angle, which is the angle that we are looking for in this particular example. So let's have a look at the second example. Here we can see from the diagram that we have a negative gradient, a line with a negative gradient, and that's actually going to um, create, not problems, but we need to be careful about how we interpret the relationship between tan of theta and the gradient. So first things first, we're going to need to know what the gradient of this line is. So I've got its equation, 3x plus y equals 2. This equation isn't in gradient intercept form, so I need to make y the subject. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So now I can see that this is a line with a gradient of negative 3. Now, we want to find the angle that the line makes with the positive x-axis again. So this here is the angle that we're looking for, the obtuse angle. Now, I'm not going to say that tan of theta equals the gradient because tan of this obtuse angle won't equal the gradient. So I'm just going to call my unknown angle something else. I'm going to say that tan of alpha is going to be equal to the gradient, which in this case is negative 3. And so alpha is going to equal inverse tan of negative 3. So we'll just flip back over to the calculator to work that out. Okay, so trig button, inverse tan of negative 3. Control enter. And you'll see here we get a negative angle. Now that doesn't make sense in our geometric problem, but let's have a little bit of a look at actually which angle that relates to in our diagram. So we found that alpha equals negative 71.57 degrees. And so we've been given an acute angle, but a negative acute angle. And actually we can think about this as being this angle in here. Negative 71.57 degrees. And so we can calculate theta because we know that theta and 71.57 degrees must add up to 180 degrees since these two angles form a straight line. So theta therefore is 180 degrees minus 71.57 degrees. So with my calculator this is a fairly easy calculation to make because my previous answer was negative 71.57 degrees. So I want 180 minus 71.57 or negative 71.57 plus 180. So I simply need to add 180 degrees here and I get my answer of 108. Now be careful about the rounding there. I'm just going to move that down onto the next line so you can see it. So it actually is 108, if we're talking two decimal places, 108.43 degrees. So 108.43 degrees is the size of the angle that the line makes with the positive x-axis.